Hi, everybody. Um, I have a ritual. I take off my shoes to feel more comfortable. And you may see that my socks are more Ukrainian than ever. All right. I live in hope. We always live in turbulent times. My parents were immigrants to the United Kingdom in the 1960s. They met there, they married, they had three kids. I'm the youngest, and I was born in the 1970s. I, literally, 1972, which is the 50th year of Pentagram's birth as well, so I always think that I'm the baby, the black baby they had. <laughs> this guy was a major problem for the aspects of immigration in the UK. Does anybody know who he is? Enoch Powell. Enoch Powell gave a speech in Birmingham that was very visceral. It's called the Rivers of Blood. And it epitomized the idea of the atmosphere that was going on in Britain at that time where they didn't want us at all. They wanted to reject us. And that has been a thread through my existence in my country that I was born and love so much. And one needs to understand the strengths and rational differences of diversity, that what it gives you is magic. Not pain, not suffering, magic. And it should give you a, f a forward sense of momentum and a contemporary outlook towards life. It should be a mechanism that one actually utilizes, right? And so as a black young man, as me, I think I was 19, looking a little sad, I don't know why, but in the canteen at, at uh, London College of Printing, it was hard to understand my identity, who I was, what I was there to do, what there to achieve. Understanding where I belonged was exceedingly hard. And I got into a prestigious school for my masters, Yale University. I didn't even know it had a graphic design course. Um, and this is my father, Godwin Anomotu Opara, who passed away two years ago, not of COVID, um, in Nigeria. And when I was leaving to go to the US from the UK, my father said these words, design is spiritual, it's a way of life. Now, when that hits you, and you're sitting down in the kitchen table, and your father says that, and it's like, go with God, you start to tear up. But you also can't really figure out really what he said. <laughs> and my father was an incredibly pious man, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that the sense of religion was overly... Uh, strong within what he was stating at that time. And so I've been trying to unravel this from the sense of my identity for about 26 years. I've been in the United States for 26 years of who I am, what I do, why I exist, and what I stand for. And the fact of the matter is that Design and spirituality are intertwined. We don't utilize that term enough. We use good design, positive design, all kinds of manner of things. But the whole idea here is what spiritual means, right? The idea that you're not um, looking at oneself, 
right? You're looking at the element of fulfillment and projecting it and relaying it in ideas and in, of your imagination to others to bind them together, right? And we should understand that more. We don't have to be religious to use that term at all, right? It's in all of us, right? To really project it to the communities that need it. And design is the other term. What does it mean? We always say, okay, design is about solving problems, blah, blah, blah. I was asked by Sir John Sorrell of the, the London Design Festival um, about my definition of design a few uh, months back. And I started scratching my head. I've never really thought about it that much. I always said it's not really about solving problems, but I never really said what it was about, right? And it's design is the ability to produce a desired outcome and to free, be free of constraints, right? Utilizing rational thinking, creative skill, appraisal, to gain a progressive and transformative outcome, right? And so that takes us to elevating our spirits through design to others in a transformative, transformative and progressive manner. And if you think about it, to whom are you doing this? That was the thing I needed to understand. And as I said, I've been sort of searching in regards to that sense of my identity, but knowing that I am a black male, the black community, not just only in the US, but and, and elsewhere, is normally seen as the lowest common denominator, right? Through the aspects of prejudice and poverty, and invisibility. And so, with that being said, how do we improve the well-being of these black indiv individuals and communities in a societal manner with the, sense, the sensibility that um, design and spirituality can come together to change, to transform them, to move them forward, to have inner fulfillment? Right? And so, how can we do that? Well, I, before I talk about the person I was designing for, I'm going to start talking about the aspects of de incarceration of African American in the United States. And I don't know who knows who Ben Cohen is, but I'm not going to, you don't have to shout it out if you do. But he said this, we don't want to freely be using cannabis, right? When people, disproportionately black, are locked up for the, doing the same thing, right? And that's what Ben said. Rockefeller laws of 1973 were a pivotal point in US history um, because of what Nelson Rockefeller did, who was the governor of New York at the time. He introduced an idea, practical idea, which was terrible, about possession of narcotics. And if you were in possession of over two grams of any narcotic or high-level narcotic, you would be in prison for a minimum of 15 years and a maximum of 25, right? Now, think about who that's going to affect, right? Yeah, likes of me. And so over the course of time, there's been a fight, a fight that is now being realized in regards to repealing these types of laws. And 
the, one of the massive reasons is that cannabis is becoming more legalized in the United States, in certain states. So they don't know what to do. They've got all these black and also Hispanic uh, men, majority, in prison for these crimes that is now legal? What the fuck? <laughs> and so we come to this gentleman. I'm Ben. Jerry. Ben. This is Ben Cohen of Ben and Jerry's. And we can learn a lot from Ben Cohen. We can, he's normally seen as a activist, right? From, uh, from his inception of Ben and Jerry's. But Ben can also learn from us, and that's what he always wanted. And I remember getting the f a phone call about him, um, from him, and it said, I, a friend of mine, who's Stefan Sackermeister, who you may know, I, wa I wanted to talk to him about a, a black designer. Do you know any? And he said, I know one. Oh, Stefan, you know more than one, damn it. Uh, well, that one was me. And he wanted to talk to me about an idea called best, Ben's Best, or Ben's Best Buds. And it's really all about the idea of creating 100% cannabis product that 100% of it, uh, the profits, go to the de-incarceration of black um, prisoners in the United States and to right the wrongs for drugs. And I thought, that's really compelling. And I, at the time, I, at first, I said, well, is it a little bit token-esque to actually have me doing this? And he said, no, because I want a lot of the people that are going to be working for me, uh, communications, and also I'm selling all the, the produce to only black franchises. And so they can gain that money and also fight the fight. And I said, okay, that's great. So how do we start? Well. The idea was the, uh, the, uh, to be evocative from the point of, of, of graphics is really always interesting, right? Looking at it uh, from the prospects of uh, type, uh, um, and there's a major talent in America right now called Trey Seals of vocal type that he utilizes, um, uh, or generates typefaces from protests, um, from um, protests like uh, the walk on Washington with Martin Luther King and I have a dream speech to Eva Peron. And we started to build an identity from that structure. We started building the type as image um, that garners the aspects of the effects of the, the product. But that wasn't enough. Ben wanted us to do more, and he wanted me to do more. He wanted me to express myself as a black male and symbolize that, to have that, fulfill, that fulfillment. He pushed me to that point. And to me, he is like a very spiritual person. And so I, I started, but this isn't me. This is Dana Robinson. She's another artist that removes the traces of exploitive, white-dominated capitalism um, of visual languages and sort of strips it away so there's a, there's a new, truer agency towards them, as you can see on the left-hand side. And this is a close-up of her work. She strips it away. And I felt as though I needed to, as a designer, to, to express that, to fulfill that. And I, I have a love of collage. And so I started to look at the sense of a profile of a young African-American male who is or has uh, been incarcerated with an orange top that's synonymous for being incarcerated in the US. But the flowers are a symbol of, of, of truth, of freedom, of forgiveness, but also the hair. Now, our hair is really important, even though I don't have much anymore. Hair being the purple hyacinth, meaning the sense of sorrow. And I wanted to symbolize that and then apply it to the product tins. 
apply the sense of message, apply myself, like elevate one's spirit, be transformative, be progressive through rational thinking. And so these are just some of the product elements that we have generated with messaging from Nelson Mandela and Angela Davis. And so these may be seen as sort of crude vehicles to improve the well-being of others, <clears throat> but it really is about changing the way that society is, is deemed. It, it is a chain reaction that is occurring. The idea that it uplifts a black designer like myself and others that will take on that particular mantle. It also um, uh, is all about black franchises and cannabis around the country and the de-incarceration of black males. That is a sense of change, a sense of being transformative and progressive. And so what we need to do is to move, all of us, is to move our ideals and our principles and our knowledge towards a way of prophesizing it, prophesizing design towards these communities more so to gain that sense of spirituality, to gain that sense of fulfillment. I love my father very much. And I live in hope, I really do. And it's a long shot, it's a long shot, but as Ben says, you know, I mean, we were huge long shots. And if you're not going to help long shots succeed, all you're going to get is the status quo. Bedankt. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Okay. Got to put these on. Can I sit down? Yeah, put them on. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you very much, man. Um, that felt at times like I was listening to a sermon. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? No, you're clearly very passionate about this idea of unleashing the potential of spirituality and design. Um, let's make it, to, to make it a little bit more concrete for me, give me an example of something that is just a d uh, devoid of spirituality. <laughs> McDonald's. McDonald's, as in the... the ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> okay, um, how would you inject spirituality in that? What, what would, what would a, a spiritual McDonald's look like? <laughs> it's a really, really good point. I think it's the aspect of, of, um, of giving back, the sense of understanding what the community actually needs at what time. So the idea of the content is important. If, you, if the contents is important, and when I say the contents is what they're selling is mm. important, then you can't really achieve that. So is it all about the element of healthier foods? Is it also the element of bringing in to being foods that is connected to the community, mm. right, at, at large, and fulfilling that factor, right? So m less globalization, more localization in that particular case in point. Um, and also the way that one actually sells it. Mm. Right? But if that's, if that's not there from the start, is it feasible to just no. invent that out of nothing? No, I mean, it can't, can not everything, yeah, not everything can, can be that way. Yeah, it's just the way it's going to be. I mean, yeah. The capitalist system doesn't really um, take very well to um, things that want to uh, uh, change it, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, yeah, not, not all things can work. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't got so much time, but That's I okay. do want to just, b there's a little bit of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> just delve in a little bit to um, you know, your experiences as a, a Nigerian Brit working in New York. You've yeah. been there, you've built a very successful career. Um, you're often, I imagine, the only black face in the room. Yes. Um, how has that experience impacted your, uh, yeah, your... Yeah, you're creating. Yeah, you're that's a really design. good thing. I mean, when I first started, um, you know, uh, I would sit there, um, people would look up, and then I would open my mouth, and the Queen's English would come out <laughs> of a black guy, <laughs> and then they would listen. 
and and trust me, it works each mm. and every time. Uh, you know, they're surprised, they're stunned, but they also start to pay attention. Now, I find that incredibly insulting uh, and, and discriminatory, um, but yet, um, if I can actually get through to them and change them in any which way, then I've done my job. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and like it or not, though, that, that puts you in a position of being a role model. Is, is that something that you're comfortable with for, for lots of black and brown designers? To a certain degree, yes. Um, you know, w one of the things that I thought when I was going to America is that I'd meet more black designers. It took years um, to, to do that. Um, and uh, I was in Atlanta about uh, four years ago, and I'd met the most amount of black designers I've ever, you know, ever seen, and that, that room was about 20 people. Um, that was not much. I mean, there, there's only, you know, 3% of uh, uh, designers uh, in America are, 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 are black, yeah. which is incredibly small. Um, but the idea of being a, a, a mentor um, has, 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 has taken up, um, taken off, even before uh, George Floyd yeah. um, aspects and uh, Black Lives Matter, um, what Pentagram and myself have put into place is that we, yes, we do teach at these prestigious schools, but yet we've now not rejected those, but we're on the same path, mirroring it for um, uh, students that are at um, 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 different colleges, community yeah. colleges, um, teaching the same classes to them. They don't have those opportunities. Again, that's what we should be doing. Also going into high school, middle school, and yeah. um, other, uh, all our other designers are actually doing that net right now. And uh, black and white designers yes. are, are doing that, which, which is fantastic development. Have you always felt, though, comfortable to be vocal about the need for um, more black people, uh, more black colleagues? Uh, um, to a certain degree, yes, um, okay. but you know, where, where, can, where can you find them? They're very, very limited. I know them. Um, can they fit into the pentagram model? Will they be comfortable in that model? Yeah. I am that yeah. example, but I'm my own particular person, yep. personality. So we shall see. We, you know, we hope and pray that that actually occurs very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I, do, I wish we had time, um, but we'll continue this conversation. And uh, yeah, be keep chatting to, to Eddie afterwards. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much, Eddie Oparang. Thank you, Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>